In this video, we show you how to install the major components of a tack fuel system and walk you through the tank mapping process to create a unique strapping chart for the tank. A Varic tack fuel system replaces the stick and string technique normally used to measure the contents of collapsible fuel storage tanks. The tack fuel system offers better accuracy and consistency when compared to the manual process. The system is pre-configured and tested at the Varic factory for your individual site. At this point, you should have unpacked the tack fuel system from the transportation boxes, selected the locations for the laptop, tick, and TDU. You should have also run all communications and power cables to these locations, ready for hookup to the equipment. Refer to the TAC Fuel System Manual for guidance. To start, ensure that Fuels Manager is operational and ready to start the mapping process. Then connect the cable coming from the TDU to the TIC and connect the TIC to the Fuels Manager PC. The system is now ready to be powered up. We map one tank at a time, so select the first tank in the system, make sure that it's empty, and begin installing the fuel gauge. Remove the existing vent pipe. Replace it with a 7660 tactical fuel gauge by first lifting and tilting the vent and inserting the sensor into the bag. Make sure that there are no kinks or twists in the cable. While feeding the cable into the CST, use your hand or gently place your foot on the gauge to keep it from sliding away from the center of the tank and fasten down the coupling. Attach the heart cable to the top quick disconnect input port. This cable will be connected to the TDU. Secure the port and cable caps together when connecting. If you are connecting a series of fuel gauges, run another heart cable and attach it to the bottom output port. The other end of this cable would be attached to the next fuel gauge in the series. The TFG is now installed with secure input and output connections. Now we need to connect the TDU to the system. But before connecting anything, make sure that the TDU is properly grounded. Then connect the combined power and comms cables to the top right port of the TDU. This is the cable that runs from the control area where the tick is located. Then connect the cable from the first fuel gauge to the top left port. Attach the pulse cable to the middle port along the bottom of the TDU. The other end of the cable connects to the flow meter. And finally, if you have more than one tank loop from another set of tanks, connect the second system's heart cable to the bottom left port of the TDU. Again, double check the tack fuel system manual to ensure you have connected the right cables to the correct ports on the TDU before supplying power to the system. Now we need to connect the other end of the pulse cable to the system's flow meter. You may have ordered a new flow meter from Varic to obtain highly accurate measurements. But if you're using an existing flow meter at your site, the process is the same. Back in the control area, switch the tick on. The power indicator light should remain on while the transmit and receive lights should flicker every few seconds. Now we're ready to record the mapping process in Fuels Manager while filling the collapsible fuel tank. From the Operator Interface's tank mapping screen, enter the CST number for the tank you wish to map and execute. Enter an ending volume by clicking on the field. This generally corresponds to the tank size. We recommend mapping an empty tank, but if your tank has fuel in it, enter an initial volume amount. At this point, the meter in the field and the value on this screen should be reset to zero and the meter's pulse ratio is set to one. If the CST is ready to accept fuel, the process can be enabled in the system using the training command button. Select Start and execute the command. Fuel can now be pumped into the CST. In the field, start the pump to charge the fuel lines. Slowly open the valve on the tank to be strapped. Record the meter start values and regulate the flow of fuel through the meter to tolerances required for accurate measurement and transfer of data points by the tank fuel system. As the tank fills, the system records up to a thousand individual points of data. Depending on the flow rate and size of your tank, the entire process may take a few hours to complete. When you've reached the tank's capacity, close the valve at the tank and record the final reading from the flow meter. Collapsible storage tanks in their nature are flexible. 
After they are filled for the first time, they expand due to the weight of the fuel. The tack fuel system accounts for this lateral movement of fuel using the relaxed volume field. On a new tank, allow 36 hours for the fuel to rest before entering a value in this field. On existing tanks, allow 12 hours to rest. You can identify when the resting period is over when no CST movement is detected by the gauge. Again, from the operator interface tank mapping screen, ensure the CST number corresponds to the tank ID. Enter the final meter volume amount into the relax volume field and process the change using the training command button. This will set the relax strap that will be used for all future measurements from the CST. Lastly, in the tank detail screen, change the tank strap view status to relaxed. This completes the tank mapping process.